Hello, my name is Denis Kudyshov. I'm working in, in the Hermos uh, research teams. And a uh, few months ago, I was asked to make a presentation about what we can do with uh, Raspberry Pi and, and Pi. Uh, and at that time, we already had remote development tools, so the idea was to think about how to manage Raspberry using Pi remotely without uh, installing full desktop environments with screens, mouses. And so and this is how uh, this project was built. So it is part of things and uh, what, is, what is actually part of things? First of all, it's just the file image is running on Raspberry Pi device. So it can be bigger phone, uh, Raspberry Pi or other small devices to have part of and run. And to support it we have RMVM. Uh, it is quite nice technology, full featured JIT, FFI, so we can call external libraries available for these devices from vendors. We can call uh, external programs using OS process or related projects. <coughs> this all supports it. And uh, for Raspberry Pi, we have a few options to control uh, GPU pins. Uh, one library is Wiring Pi uh, library, there was already uh, bindings for the firewall, which was built by John Baptiste. Now it is migrated to GitHub, and there is also options to use PyGPO library, uh, which was done by Kim Rowledge. Uh, but to use it from Fargo, you will need to switch to a compiler. But of course, Fargo Things is not just a running Fargo, because then why call it differently? Fargo Things is also the Fargo which able to control remote IoT device. And here we have Telefaro project, which provides uh, full remote access to remote running image. So we can script everything, uh, we can script GPU libraries, uh, GPU pins from the remote playground, from the object inspector. We can browse the running processes using remote process browser. And we have general complete tool set for remote development. So we can just implement new code and to fix problems with code which running for Raspberry Pi. And uh, except controlling running firewall on remote on remote device, we can also control uh, control remote IoT device using vendor protocols and libraries remotely. For example, for Arduino devices, there is Firmato. Uh, Firmato seal port protocol which allow to control GPO pins remotely and we have uh, bindings for this. And uh, this is all very low level tools. So yeah, we have general environment to program but interesting would be to provide some object model of board uh, to, get, uh, to get adventures of our live object environment. Because if you will follow some tutorials, it's all about some simple procedures where you pass ID of pins with uh, digital values so it's based on, on strings and number and nothing more on top and uh, when I uh, learn how to work with Raspberry uh, I, I, I always, uh, I always uh, thought why, why it's so procedural I also many examples in Python or Ruby but nobody, nobody tried to wrap it with objects at least I not found it so I built very simplistic board model where pins represent the object. So we can just get instance of particular pin and to configure it with specific mode and to toggle digital value or set up some analogous value or read values and we can add some suitable methods for this. And then it also provides uh, here a model of boards itself which, uh, which specify concrete configuration of physical device. So, for example, uh, class which represent uh, model B of Raspberry Revision 1 has only one connector with 26 pins. But Revision 2 already uh, was pro provided extra, extra connector which named P5 with extra uh, 8 pins. And if you will uh, use it from far, you will get this configuration out of the box. And also, a uh, board model provides high-level peripherals, uh, which allow to program uh, 
which allows to encapsulate business logic, uh, which uh, business logic of interaction with pins in the uh, model of physical devices. So, for example, there is now there is just few. It's a button which you can uh, subscribe on clicks, and there is also switch device. It provides a way how to extend it in some complex cases. And another important thing that the board model is persistent. So you can configure it with, with some tools, uh, configure pins, set up values on the pins so some layers can, can be turned on. And then you just save image and after restart all, all state will be recovered. So when you reboot your Faro and start, uh, uh, reboot your Raspberry and start Faro, uh, then everything will start to be in the state when Faro was saved. So if it was saved with turn on LED, then LED will be again turned on, and so on. And all devices will continue working. And that's the idea, that the Faro image start to be the actual thing of your Raspberry Pi. And uh, to work with this simple object model, uh, I introduced extend, extended inspector, which provide uh, in scanner like in docs which you can follow in the web uh, it uh, represents life in state it is interactive you can interact with it and it also provides evaluation pane uh, with uh, pre-built GPU bindings so from the evaluation pane you can evaluate script with spin objects and this is how it looks and now it is uh, almost the time for demo but last point that also uh, this inspector provides provide extra tab to discover, to, uh, to explore and uh, manage uh, installed devices which buttons, uh, switches or something complex which you have and this is how it looks yes, and last point that uh, this uh, board can be accessed remotely and an inspector will work same way like in local environment so this is general what this part of things is and uh, the demo, yes so in this demo you can discover uh, is anybody saw this Raspberry Pi? Maybe I should do something like it. Maybe it's better. <laughs> so here uh, it is Raspberry headless Raspberry Pi uh, with configured uh, button which connected from the ground to GPO zero uh, with uh, uh, red LED with green red LED and with another button configured from the power to GPO three and, and what we want in this demo, what I will show is how to make a button to switch the LED so red button, I call it red because it's connected with red wire and so I want red button to switch red LED and green button to switch green LED okay. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, development image with installed Telefaro tools and supporting so with installed development part of Farosync's project. So this is uh, playground where I already prepare scripts to connect to remote Faro image which is running on Raspberry Pi. So first of all, I need to start Faro on Raspberry. So for this I use standard tools to access a more famous machine. And I already copy some pre 
far image with installed server part of far things project. So you need to run it as super user. Uh, ah, it's, it's detail. You can configure a special user with required permission. It's just, uh, it just simple to do for demo. It is uh, actually some permission required to accept the old game, so that's why. So far we started with efforts that uh, some, uh, some manager is listening on given form, and now we can connect. So this script uh, provides a way to connect to any remote far image. In that case, we connect to the Raspberry. So it returns uh, remote far instance with which we can open playground, browser, and to play on some low level. But interesting here is that we want to retrieve the board instance and then to play with it. So remote file provide evaluate method, and then we can just inspect the result. So this is a remote board inspector. Uh, this table represents pin state, uh, pin scanner, which you can which, uh, which is shown all documentation about Raspberry or Beaglebone, similar schemas uh, everywhere. And the interesting thing here is that uh, evaluation pane provides bindings to the, uh, to the pin, to the GPO pins. And we can just evaluate script with them. So if you look, GPO1 is actually object, so it's some GPO pin with, with some uh, additional logic because First, the PO pin also provides some capabilities to be uh, analogous output, but it is detailed. So we can, uh, for, for convenience, we can assign it to another named variable, so we will know that it is the letter. Then we need to configure it uh, to be output, and then we can uh, turn on it, so you see it right. Interesting thing that you can uh, notice is that now uh, some special icon appears near the GPO one, and it is actually interactive. We can switch the value from this interface library. And now let's uh, do something. No, not not this. Uh, as I said, uh, Faro Things provide also some high-level model of devices. Right now, we will very simple of them but idea to implement business logic there. So we want the button, and there is already implemented button device. I just need to copy speed. We can of course configure the button pin in the same way like I configure the LED. Uh, but idea to do some to simplify this process. So this is red LED, and we want to switch it with red button. So here I have script with red button. So I need to have to ask the board to install device, which will uh, which is connected from the ground. It is important, and I will show why. So if I install it, you see immediately uh, the icon, new icon is a piece near the GPO with zero, which is represents the button. And if you press the button, it will actually show live state. So you can see that it is now red, and then I press out and it is green. And now also we can switch to the devices to discover what uh, what devices we install and what they stay in. This is also live, live uh, uh, icons, so you can interact the same way like in previous time. And we can uh, subscribe on the event, so it, it's still uh, low level, but it is interesting to see. So I can say when. Then button release. Uh, send. Toggle digital value. Uh, 
with the left. And now the button is uh, subscribed uh, and it should switch the left value. Ah, it's because I made a mistake, yes. And you see now uh, the remote debugger. But actually this is not the place where I want to show the remote debugger. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just close it and make and fix it from here. So we need to unsubscribe, wrong subscription. And then to subscribe again. And now it should switch. So here, yeah, you see? The button is work, but it is still uh, quite low level because we still script some logic that we need to subscribe from the, to some particular event and to do some action with level uh, with that. And the idea to encapsulate such kind of logic in the devices. And for this, uh, I also implement some simple switch. So. Switch, in fact, will do the same like I do from speed, but it will be a separate device which state you can discover. This is red button, so I subscribe and it is not, now not working. And now I can install the switch device, which will affect GPU 1, which is in our scanner, which is our uh, red pin or red LED. And it will use red button. So I install device. Now we can see that new device appears here. We can of course uh, interact with it just from here. But interesting that now the button is working again. So that's idea. Uh, and now let's imagine that we want to implement something different. And let's implement double click device. So for this we can just browse the current implementation of switch. So we open the browser. And we can discover how it is implemented. There is some business logic connection method which actually configure affected, affected pin and subscribe to the bottom, uh, which you which already saw. And the actual action happens here. So to implement double click switch, we just need to add here some simple logic to count a uh, number of clicks. So we can just create new class. And we need the variable number of release. Time because uh, in a remote scenario, uh, method editors and class editors are not optimized. So, some bidirectional communication happens. It, it uses a default way how and far we create classes and edit methods. So, we now we, we need to go to the uh, super class implementation of toggle method and just put here our required business logic. So, we just need to take into account to increment number of releases and toggle only when it starts to be 2. <coughs> so when here I apply changes, I choose where to implement it. Interesting here that our request was actually initiated on the Raspberry Pi and then it was delegated to the remote connected environment. So new method is done and now we need just to connect to install new device. In that case we will try to, uh, to use green LED. So for this we need green button. Green button is connected using GPO3. And also maybe you can not you, you can notice that uh, first uh, GPO0 pin is green by default, but GPO3 is red. 
It is because they connect it from the different way. In one case it is the ground, in another case it is the power. But the button object, the button class encapsulates this difference and when users will implement business logic with buttons, they just subscribe on events and they don't need to think about it, which is important. Then we just install the double PDP switch. So now we have new pin, which we use. So it is green pin, as you can see. And now we can try to press. And uh, nothing happens, one reason I press only once, but in fact I made a mistake. I have only five minutes. Initialize to zero. What? You need to initialize to zero. Right, right. So, and the interesting is that in that case I have live instance and I actually don't, I, I can do, don't care about inside live method. I can, I, I play with the Raspberry, I can just fix this state here. Normally I of course should implement initialization in the device. So we already clicked, so it will be one. Yes, and we can browse that it is explorer that it is still. So this is remote debugger with full future, full future. So I can assign it to one, and then I need to restart and continue. But first, I want to show you that the debugger, because of our mod multiple tools, uh, debugger is actually also show the. Pin the, the remote board inspector here just in place. So I restart and I proceed. And the LED is now on. So that's how I lively fix the problem. And now it starts to work. And double click is working. Uh, and now uh, the problem is that. Changes in the code which we do was on the Raspberry Pi device, and if we broke it, then we lose it. So normally we need to synchronize to our development environment, and Telefar our tools provide such capabilities, so we can call this script, apply changes to the client, <coughs> and the changes in the running image session will be transferred back to the client, and the client will reapply it locally, so we can do it. And now, if we open our local browser on <coughs> double click switch, then we see that package is dirty and we have this local device. Then we can open, in case of uh, fire, we can open an iceberg and create new branch with fix or new feature and commit changes. But another interesting thing is that. Now we configure the this, this instance, and normally we, we really want to save this configuration. So after we start, it should, all these buttons should continue working, because this is what we do. We try to build a sync with this Raspberry. And uh, before I save the image, I, I want to uh, disable the red button, because uh, I want to show you that Pins also save uh, independent state. Red button, so red switch needs to be deleted. So from this context menu you can control the installed devices. <coughs> now we can see the button is not working. And now we can save the image. It takes the time somehow, and Raspberry saving image is quite uh, quite slow, and uh, maybe with minimal image it will be much faster. So let's wait a bit. This is already the end of presentation. And then we will see what happens. 
So in just a few pictures which you already see, I don't show the playground, but it's just normal playground uh, where any scripts will be executed on remote machine. So you actually can evaluate some with OS process capabilities, you can call any external prog programs, you can just work with wiring by library directly on the low level if you want. And there is a remote browser which you saw where you can install great phones, for example, and then debug it library. So and and now I think it is 70 safe. Is it done? And now if we open again inspector, then I can turn off the red lab. Now it is turned off and I just quit the image. So now you see that image is turned off and now no, nothing is working anymore. And if I start then uh, red LED should be turned on automatically. You see? And the button is continuing. And we can again connect directly with using the same instances from the, uh, from the inspector. And for future, we need to support more Raspberry models. Uh, I just show a little inspector of uh, revision 2, Raspberry Pi revision 2. I can open it locally, in fact. <coughs> Then here you see that there is P1 and P5 with uh, four pins. Configuration is quite simple, so it should be no problem to support other models. It just needs uh, to implement some initialized method. And we want to support Eagle Bone and to support Arduino. In case of Arduino, we of course will not uh, deploy far because it's not running there. But it is, can be nice to teach the programming of such kind of devices with this live inspector. And we want to provide the way to register running far as a service just from the image remotely to provide zero config for this project so you can just evaluate some to, to type some comments in the Raspberry and everything will be installed. And general evolution of, of Telefar will bring a lot of uh, things like remote requiring, it's not supported correctly right now. And the interesting possibility to implement detection of running images. So okay, instead of uh, connect using IP address, we can actually implement the tool which will show all running far instances on the network. And in case of far, we will just run far and you will see it immediately in some special tool. That's all. Second of all, move that security item on your last slide way, way up. Because IoT is the number of number one source of malware. And I know it's exciting to work with these things and make it work and it's fantastic. Uh, but you know, I was going to ask you about security, then I saw that you had the, you had it in mind already, but really move it up where your priority is. Um, currently, security managed by external tools, so you establish SSH to nail and use it. And well, you connect directly to TCP port 40, whatever, right? So basically, any, anything in between can. Yes, and with the uh, yesterday show project session, I showed that we can uh, do SSH from far, so we can simplify it.
Yes. So, do we start? Yes. Hello, I'd like to present multiple editor. And I'd like to ask who didn't see the demo yet? Didn't. Okay, perfect. So, multiple editor is actually the first series tool and the widget implemented on top of Block. It is flexible, fast, and cool, we hope. But first, who doesn't, who doesn't know what is Block in the context of this talk? So, block is not. No, 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 no. Ah, not <laughs> Okay, so block is a low level, low level vector based graphical framework that we, that should replace Morphic, we hope. So, only I personally work on block almost for three years, and this is a long lasting project, and we hope um, you will like it. And what you can do in block is to render something like this. So we have shapes, gradients, whatever, SVG pass, or you could also render something more complicated, like this phone, which is completely vector-based. So the interesting point is that there are no pictures used for this um, element. So the lines are actually gradient. So first I'd like to emphasize that the version of multiple editor is alpha or pre-alpha, right? Um, we, when we started implementing text editor, we didn't start from the set of or a list of features that we want to implement. Instead, we started from real-world use cases. Mm. And <coughs> I would also like you to not think in terms of features that we support now, because we have small issues with insertion, deletion, but instead try to think about the direction in which we want to go and maybe final destination that we want to reach because we don't know exactly what we will get in the end so let's start from the basics first as any text editor we support syntax highlighter so you can scroll you can actually type new lines you can delete so the cursor selection works and the interesting that this is one of the longest files uh, methods in file. And I'm not sure you can open this rubric in a reasonable amount of time. And but there is a twist. Mm, I can actually open two windows of the same editor. And it works. And the scrolling, of course, is independent. But basically, this wasn't intentional. It's just luck. Because at some point, <laughs> At some point, I saw on the mailing list the question, can you open uh, the single data source in fast table in two lists? I thought, okay, what if I open two windows of the same text editor? And it worked. So here's the demo. <laughs> um, and then, let's switch to use cases. So first, this text editor allows you to embed graphical elements inside of the text. And the first, what we thought is what developers like to do most is to write documentation, right? <laughs> and especially when, the, especially when the documentation is just a plain text. Yeah. Classic comment. <laughs> the funniest thing to do. Mm, so we started from the pillar. Who doesn't know what is pillar? Yeah. Oh, so, so the pillar is kind of a markdown down syntax. It was developed in small talk it allows you to render and export documents in HTML, MD files, etc. So what I have here is actually a pillar file which contains the documentation of our another block uh, project called Modrid, which is a simple visualization engine. Uh, you probably already heard Modrid. So we just inspect this file and this is how it looks like which is a raw file and you may notice that we have this line here right? so this is a reference to the example in a class that already exists in my photo image and it also it references a method passive edges <coughs> mm. so if you want to see what is this method 
you would either browse the class to find this method, or you would copy paste the source, the source code of this method and to the playground and then execute the seed result. It doesn't actually scale. You have to spend windows, windows, and windows. Instead, let's switch to our moldable editor. And of course, of course, it's syntax highlighting. But the interesting is that this line can be expanded. And you see a real visualization. So this is not a picture. This is actual module visualization rendered live in this editor. <coughs> I can collapse this, and it works. The second example, this is actually not intentional, because at some point <laughs> someone, broke, someone broke the example, and this is what we have. If, if example doesn't work, we get this exception. So this is how it is. Let's close it next. And now start the tutorial. You may notice that so we have we have a list. And there is a small number. This is index. And this index is not part of the text editor. This is a tournament. You, you cannot delete it. So that's the point. Of course if I delete this this line in the list, it will go away. Can you remove the edge item, the one in the middle? <coughs> Oh, see, it's one one. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 remove it completely. The, 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 yes. 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 the, the, the numbering is... Uh, remove completely? Yeah. Connect and connect. Them. Yeah. Okay, one, this is what they want. <laughs> <laughs> you get surprised, huh? <laughs> <laughs> It works. <laughs> okay, so tutorial, in tutorial it's a little bit different um, than just uh, introduction when you want to see pictures. In tutorial you want to have a tiny code snippet. And normally what you do is just copy existing examples from the image, you put it in your documentation, then you continue 